Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. It is finally time I finally finished the controller for my, by now, two CNC's and I'm really happy with how it turned out. If you want to see how I made it, then stick around. Before I get started with the video though, I want to give a big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring it. They make super high quality PCBs for a very affordable price and I'm actually using two custom PCBs manufactured by them inside of this project. You will see more of those later. So if you have any custom PCB needs, then make sure to go check them out at the link below. Now, I actually started this project many, many months ago, probably over half a year ago by now, and uh, just thought, well, it's gonna be a quick project. I'm gonna like make an enclosure for the tablet, which has kind of been dangling there, and use one of the keyboard PCBs uh, that I already have and uh, just make it into a custom uh, top plate. Uh, combine the two projects, the 4x4 uh, keypad and the 10 keyless uh, keyboard, combine that into one, add some buttons, and I'll be done with it. And I got started, I built the outside enclosure fairly quickly and then, uh, well, uh, other things started happening. I ended up building this CNC in the meantime and uh, only now I've been able to get back to it. But that also has its bonus sides as I was able to cut the key plate on the new CNC all-in-one operation while on the old one I would have had to uh, do the uh, top keyboard first and then do the other uh, part as uh, there is not enough wire travel. Now it was not super easy uh, cutting uh, this stuff. I first did some tests on some other uh, similar thickness uh, aluminum sheet and uh, those were great. I just used a two millimeter end mill to basically contour around and relatively small step downs. Uh, but when I moved on to uh, this plate, uh, that did not work anymore at all. Uh, it ended up that this is a, a bit of a gummier alloy and uh, I broke a bunch of end mills uh, trying to do uh, slotting. First I used uh, two flute, uh, two millimeter end mills, but then I got some proper uh, single flute ones that work a lot better with the spindle, but even those uh, had just had no chance and this gummy material slotting. So I transitioned over to uh, doing uh, 2D adaptive first to clear out all the holes with a four millimeter uh, single flute end mill. That worked great. Uh, I could have actually uh, increased the ag aggressiveness of the cut a bit and sounded great. Uh, the finish was amazing and it, it did take a while. Like the, the adaptive uh, cutting took like an hour and 20 minutes or something like that, uh, which is a while, but uh, since it was running so smoothly, I could just let it run and uh, go do something else. After that, I went back in with um, adaptive uh, rest machining with a 2mm end mill to kind of get the corners a bit more and then finally uh, to the contour uh, just as a finishing operation. And that uh, left me with really nice edges. Uh, the finish was great and all the switches just perfectly uh, clicked in. Uh, the like, tolerances were basically dead on. So I'm really happy with that turnout in the end. To finish it off, I just uh, kind of gave the top a bit of a, a brushed uh, finish to uh, hide some of the imperfections and just make it look uniform as I wanted to uh, keep this uh, bare aluminum to kind of fit the color scheme. And the rest, of course, I had to uh, paint black because what else would I do? In terms of the PCBs, uh, if you have not seen uh, the video yet where I built the tankyless uh, keyboard, you certainly should go check that out. Uh, it's really cool and I made some mistakes, but in the end it turned out really great. Uh, on here I'm using uh, some uh, Gatoron blue switches. I uh, had these uh, forever and I bought these originally, uh, but they didn't have the hole for the LEDs. So I didn't want to use them in most projects because I wanted LEDs, but here I don't really care about LEDs. I mean, even having mechanical uh, keyboard switches on a CNC controller is complete overkill, uh, but for me, this is uh, the easiest way to do it, and uh, it's kind of fun as well. So I only have uh, the diodes uh, populated on there, and of course uh, the microcontroller, and then the switches. I just left the LED spots uh, completely blank since I'm not using them. Same on here on the 4x4 matrix. I uh, originally had uh, four LEDs as well that I can control here, and I uh, intended on having like stuff show up, but uh, I have a big old uh, screen here that I can sh show stuff much better and it's a lot easier to integrate. So I ended up not even adding those LEDs because I knew I was not going to use them in the end. What I might still add in the future is uh, a knob uh, for the feed rate override. I uh, built that into uh, the PCB here so I can easily add an encoder here. The only problem is that uh, 
if I w had a proper feeder rate override, I would want like like a full lot, like zero to hundred or a zero to two hundred percent that directly represents it. But the problem is that I can also change it from the interface, which would then uh, give a conflict of uh, which one uh, is the more uh, current one. So the better way would be to, to just have an infinitely turning knob where you can like decrease and increase it, but that's not as intuitive, and uh, those encoders don't always work perfectly. Another great thing would be to have a jog wheel here, and that would be able to work the same way, uh, but uh, once again, uh, uh, not sure how well that uh, would work, but I might, might add uh, one of these two here in the future, since there's a good spot for it here as well. The touchscreen interface is actually the same uh, just tablet computer that I've been running uh, uh, on here on the, both of the CNC's for a while. Uh, just put it in uh, in the enclosure, uh, added some little 3D printed uh, clips to hold it in place, and I have uh, like a USB hub in here that uh, connects all the different uh, CNC's keyboards. Uh, both you need a USB port, and I have uh, two Ethernet interfaces for the two CNC's. And uh, also uh, this USB port here on the side where I can load my files since I do not have this uh, tablet connected to the internet, just so that Microsoft Update doesn't uh, screw with me in the middle of a cut. The way that I'm uh, interfacing uh, these two uh, Mark 3 or 4 uh, is, well, the main keyboard is just straight up a standard keyboard. Uh, I don't have any uh, of the buttons assigned differently. And on the 4x4 matrix here, I actually have not assigned these buttons yet, but uh, those will be uh, for things like uh, coolant on off, light on off, uh, feed rate override, all that kind of stuff. Now, uh, probably like Sharpie on uh, what the different buttons do. And uh, these I uh, just uh, sending a key combination uh, that is not something I would normally use on here and then inside of uh, Mach 3 or 4 I'm setting that uh, keyboard uh, shortcut uh, to whatever function I want to do. Same with uh, these three buttons, they will be also hooked up to the same uh, Arduino as uh, this 4 by 4 matrix and I will just uh, assign a keyboard shortcut uh, to each one of them uh, inside of uh, like the Arduino program and the same shortcut in uh, Mach 3 and 4 and then uh, I will be able to start stop uh, and e-stop, well at least like, like a digital e-stop. I could also wire this directly into the controller but since I'm using the same uh, interface here for two different CNC's I decided to just uh, do it digitally instead of uh, directly into the controller which would definitely be the more proper way but I don't want to uh, e-stop both machines at the same time every time. Uh, all right, so I hope you liked this product. If you did, leave a like down below, and if you have any questions, leave a comment. Uh, I will gladly get back to you. With that said, thanks for watching, and I'm gonna see you guys next time.